What? You thought this wasn't just an opportunity to like self-promote myself? <laughs> oh, you fools, you fools. I'm going to read a poem that I wrote about the Pentanarchy, um, which, um, if you didn't know, um, this is where this festival is happening. Um, it is happening, um, Goyle is happening in Tinton um, at my mum's house just up the road. It's the house that I grew up in. And um, yeah, so a lot of people, as you might know, have written about Tintin Abbey. Um, the most famous being Wordsworth, um, who wrote lines composed a few miles above Tintin Abbey. Um, but also there's a very good poem by Allen Ginsberg um, about him taking LSD and like tripping, like just over there, literally by that church up that hill. Um, then you have Zadie Smith wrote a response to these, these works. Um, and in the response to these works, it's like a nice little essay, it's a lovely essay, and um, would highly, highly recommend. It's not really that much about Tintin, but she does describe visiting Tintin in it. And um, a particular bit of that essay that always frustrated me is that she's describing going to a wedding further into Wales, and she describes turning off the motorway and pulling up here at Tintin Abbey. Now, as anyone who could live here knows, <laughs> you don't just turn off the motorway and turn up at Tintin. Um, how remote Tintin is um, has always been a big feature of growing up here. Um, what else? Oh, also, importantly, um, my sister is behind the camera um, and that becomes important for obvious reasons once I begin. Um, so, this is a gestation in the Y. Last time I returned, my sister picked me up from the train. She drives now. <laughs> we know the road to Tintin in our bodies as a pause that punctuates with a there and back, there and back. So your portrayal of it is a single space. I turned off the motorway, then pulled up at the abbey, denigrates that the first time I took the bus 69 to school, I thought the distance insurmountable. I would surely waste away before wasting my life this way for seven years, a distant memory now. As we come round the corner, the abbey comes into sight. Stand up, press the bell, push forwards. It's time to get off, nearly home. Fresh air now tastes fresh and my eyes struggle to adjust to the vast iridescence again. Even in winter, the windows show evergreens protruding between bare branches. Four years have passed since here was home, not anymore, <laughs> but as we drive by, I still know the frames with which you cut my landscape. Conifers were felled, opening new sky for new houses, a hedge was trimmed, the pavement underneath free for walking again. The pubs is always opening, closing and painting, always closed now, <laughs> as my mum drives to work in the morning, white mist rises from the river. What happy accident is this, you cry? An aspiring writer growing up on the banks of the Wye? What felicitous fortitude landed you in that cradle? I had only the vaguest idea literature existed here until my first boyfriend spoke in the car of his dad's adoration of my home. I rolled my eyes and said Rowling hated it here and quashed his enthusiasm. I would say that daily life makes drear every place, but Tenton is particularly well suited. Um, all industry gone, the ironworks now a historic site, yet Range Rovers are not built by the divide. This is a desirable, commutable place to live. As we drive past the wall cap from the bus, we pa pass the park into the woods where I smoked my first joint, the monkey puzzle tree now gone, and the car park where Ollie, used to, where Ollie goes to have sex. This is a place, used to, maybe still built, don't know. <laughs> this is a place so safe that when walking home from youth club on a Wednesday night, just in that building right over there, um, it was a fun game to be scared. Sometimes we used to climb the gates, avoid the cows and clamber all over the alley, abbey walls. Mostly though, Facebook and fathers were calling. Burn orange leaves fell to the concerns of creating burnt orange hair. The first time I did it, the bottle exploded everywhere, making the bathroom a murder scene. Quiet comes when you escape your life. Tintin is only quiet to me at night. And just station in the wide does not mean that you know your body is holy or that you meet each day the same reverently. 2012, Zadie, lost in repose as epiphany took hold. Vast, silent, valley. <laughs>
2012, my idle tears falling, I perfected self-doubting, vast, silent valley. 2012, Malala shot in the head in a different, vast, silent valley. I was jealous of her. There's my cosy, countryside solitude brought with it self-centred white supremacy. I wanted to be lauded, a prom in the face of applause. When I read you, I read how you felt, how your eyes took what was outside in, how you felt whilst writing, and I feel now. My dad once said that what people think about first, second, third is I, I, I. So I declared vehemently, not me. <laughs> not me. <laughs> when I am away, moments of nostalgia turn me to googling photos of home. And it is only now that I am here again that I know. <laughs> and it is only now that I am here again that I know what was wrong with them. I do not gaze from the why at the why from the sky. I do not. I see the why. <laughs> I see. I do not gaze from the why. At the sky. I'll start this a little bit again. Um, when I'm away, moments of nostalgia turn me to googling photos of home. And it's only now that I am here again that I know what was wrong with them. Do not gaze at the why from the sky. I see the why from five foot one height or a car. And I, when I stare, 7,300 eyes stare back from fields that are no more. I have the warmest, holiest love for them and my sister who remain here. And it was a privilege to grow up in Sylvian Cottage. But other than preaching from the devil's pulpit, what ascendancy can this ruthless church offer?